Hi, I'm Tina from Prep 101. In this video, we're going to talk about the magnitude of a vector and unit vectors. There's usually one question on unit vectors on the first exam, and the magnitude we'll use when we go to calculate the area, which will also be on the first exam. Okay, let's get started. So, first thing is norm or magnitude. Norm is an older word. Most profs tend to use magnitude now. But to calculate the magnitude of the vector, it's the distance from the origin, and we denote it with two lines, so the vector with two lines beside it. If there's one line on either side of U, then that stands for absolute value, which means to make everything positive. Like in something like volume or distance, we can't have a negative volume or distance. So if we have two lines beside the vector, all we do to calculate the magnitude is we take each of the components, U1, U2, and U3, and we square them, and we put it under a square root. So it becomes square root u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared. And we'll talk in a few minutes, if the magnitude happens to be 1 when you calculate it, then it's called a unit vector. Okay, so let's give you an example here. We've got our vectors from before. So u is negative 1, negative 2, 3. v is negative 2, negative 1, 1. And w is 4, negative 1, negative 2. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is just calculating the magnitude of these vectors. So the magnitude of u, for example, would be square root, square each of these components and add them up. So negative 1 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 3 squared, all under a square root. So if we square negative 1 squared is positive 1, negative 2 squared is positive 4, and 3 squared is 9. And so we end up with root 1 plus 4 plus 9, so root 14. And that's the magnitude of u. So let's talk about the magnitude of v next. So v, we've got square root. We square all the components of v. So we have negative 2 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 1 squared, and so we get 4 plus 1 plus 1, which gives us root 6. Now, what if they asked you for the absolute, the magnitude, pardon me, of negative 3w? So if we wanted magnitude of negative 3w, then the first thing we'd have to do is treat this sort of like a bracket, so do the inside. So we do negative 3 times w first, and then we magnitude it. So let's see if you hit pause here, if you can try and find negative 3w and then do its magnitude and see what you get. So this would be the magnitude. We're multiplying the negative 3 by each component. So we get negative 12, 3, and 6. And then we do the magnitude. So square root, square negative 12, plus square the 3, plus square the 6. And the numbers are a bit big because 12 squared or negative 12 squared are 144. So plus 9 plus 36, and we get the root of 189. So those are some examples of magnitude questions that could be on the exam. The next thing we talk about is finding a unit vector. And so to find a unit vector, to find a unit vector with the same direction, first find the magnitude of the vector and then divide all the components of the vector by this answer. So for example, find a unit vector in the same direction as u equals 1 comma 3. So first thing we do is the magnitude of u. So square root 1 squared plus 3 squared. So that's 1 plus 9 under a square root or root of 10. And in the same direction means the same sign. So we don't change the signs of u at all. But we take u and we divide by its magnitude. Now, if you're a person who likes formulas, you can write u over magnitude of u. If you don't, you can just say, remember, to divide by the magnitude. So divide vector u by its magnitude. And so we take vector u is 1 and 3, and we put them both over root 10. And that would be our unit vector. And if we were to check, we could do the magnitude of this, square each of them, add them up under a square root, and of course we would get 1 because the unit vector has magnitude of 1. 
So we're going to do another example here. We're going to do find the unit vector in the opposite direction of the vector. So in the opposite direction means that we have to switch our signs. So we take our vector and our new vector u would be negative 1 times this vector that they gave us. And so we have negative 1 times each component. So it's positive 2, positive 4, and negative 5. And then think about what you have to do. What did we do in the last example? Find a unit vector. We've taken care of the opposite direction. So we've switched the signs. And now we have to do the magnitude. So square root 2 squared plus 4 squared plus negative 5 squared. And so we get 4 plus 16 plus 25 is root 45. So what would your final answer be here? So we would have to take our u, which we've switched our sign, so this is our new vector, and divide by the magnitude. So our final answer would be 2 over root 45, um, 4 over root 45, and negative 5 over root 45. And if you're a person who really likes formulas, then the formula you could use to calculate this would be negative u over magnitude of u. Because that would be switching the sign first to get opposite direction and then dividing by its magnitude when you're done. Okay, another typical exam question is finding a value of c or k or whichever letter they use on your particular exam. So find the value of c so that this vector, u equals 2c, c, 3c, is a unit vector. So the first thing I tell my students is as soon as you say unit vector, think about what that means. That means that the magnitude of the vector is 1. And so, well, a lot of people get confused when they see letters, right? And so if you get confused or if you get stressed out when you see a letter, just try and think, okay, if I had some easy vector like 1, 2, 3, what would I do? to find the magnitude, right? We know the magnitude is 1. So how would you find the magnitude of 1, 2, 3? Well, you'd do square root 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, right? We would square all the components. So do the same thing. Square root, square all your components. So 2c squared plus c squared plus 3c squared. And we know it equals 1 because it's a unit vector. And now make sure you have brackets around them so that you're squaring the 2 and squaring the 3. That's a really common mistake to, to square this out and get 2c squared, but really it's 2 squared as well, so it's 4c squared. Now, think back to high school. What did we do when we wanted to get rid of a square root when we had an equation? Well, we would square both sides. And so on the right, it's still just 1 squared, so it's still 1, but on the left, we get rid of the square root. So 2c all squared is 4c squared plus 1c squared, and 3 squared is 9, so we get 9c squared. So we've got 4 plus 1 plus 9, so that's 14c squared equals 1. And we solve that, so we divide both sides by 14. And unless you have c squared is 0, you will always get two answers. So c squared equals a number will always be plus or minus, so make sure you get two answers, unless it's c squared is 0. And then you just say 0. We don't say plus or minus 0. But here, c is plus or minus the root of 1 over 14. And because root 1 is 1, they might say plus or minus 1 over root 14. And that would be your answer. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, see more videos in this playlist. Don't forget to join the Facebook Study Hub. Use the link in the video description box. Also, I hope to see you at my prep sessions where I'll show you lots of tricks and how to ace your exam. I'll go through every problem that you need to solve and you'll solve them with confidence by the end of my prep sessions. Many of our prep sessions are free, so go to prep101.com now for more details and to sign up. I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.